thanks for tuning in to my official YouTube channel, Reverend Me Ling. I'm Reverend Me Ling. I've also been known as Reverend Susan Me Ling and Susan Me Ling and Lady Me Ling and Lady Dory Bell and a few other names over the years, um, <laughs> depending on where I've been and who I was speaking with. I know I'm not the only person who has multiple nicknames. Just saying. Um, nonetheless, still the same person, no matter what. Uh, but that's probably having to do with the fact I cannot tell a lie. Um, not forgetting that head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000 and the after effects of it. Probably a really big additional factor. I could be wrong, but I'm fairly certain that probably has something to do with it. Additionally. And so, um, I was just listening to, and, and I, I know what I look like. I was listening to Sean Hannity talk with the President of the United States of America. I've listened to Fox News and Fox Business and, and I know what I look like. I know I'm not the only one who, you know, has tattoos and a different color hair style and stuff who listens to Fox. But I've also listened to CNN and MSNBC and, and, and the like. I have. I just personally, when it comes to the aspects of the opinions and commentary, Usually, I, I align, despite what I look like, um, I, I align more along with, you know, Fox News and Fox Business. Um, I can agree with certain points in regards to MSNBC and, and CNN. However, a lot of times I just, I just happen to, I mean, I am a Republican. I'm not saying all Republicans only listen to one news station or only pay attention to certain things. I'm not saying that at all because I, I would guesstimate there are plenty on both sides of the aisle who listen to and, and read up on various things despite whether they vote one way or another. I would guesstimate so. That being said, I was listening to, to Sean Hannity speaking with the current president of the United States of America, Donald J. Trump, which I knew he was, I knew it, I knew it, I knew it, I did, I knew it, I knew it, I knew he was going to get the GOP nomination, I knew he was going to become president of the United States of America, and if you go to my website, www.susanmuling.com, you'll see that proof. Absolutely. Um, I, <laughs> however, despite the fact that I have been a Republican as long as I have, well before the current president of the United States of America, by the way, the first time I voted, which was after waking up from the coma from my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000, I think if I am accurate... I think I did an all-Republican ticket for that particular uh, voting season, um, if I'm not mistaken, because I just, I didn't, um, I didn't feel at that time that, and this is not in any offense towards any Democrats, just at that time because of everything from the nightmare that I had when I was a child growing up just really getting closer and closer and the, the, the feelings of it, um, really just, um, getting heavier. Um, I couldn't, I couldn't vote any other way at that time. And it wasn't that I didn't care, that it actually had to do with a lot of caring in that regard. And so, yes, I voted for George W. Bush Jr. twice. Um, <laughs> I knew that um, then who I enlisted in and fought to get 
emancipated to enlist in the United States of America's Armed Forces. I knew that he was a Democratic president. I also knew what my nightmare was as far as that was concerned and knew I needed to do what I needed to do to get into the United States of America's Armed Forces. But I also knew that he was going to get that presidency back in whatever year it was that he got elected in. Same thing with the president before him. Um, I knew that he was not going to get a second term. I knew that. Um, and then I knew that the uh, president before him uh, was going to, to get the, the second term. I knew that. That being said, I also had a neighbor many years ago. It was in an apartment complex, and um, I had seen these uh, flyers. She had lost her cat, and I had seen a cat that looked similar to it. So I went over to her apartment house, and I told her what I saw and everything like that. She goes, well, come inside, come inside. Sean Hannity is on. And I was like, oh, I like Hannity. And she goes, he is just so handsome. And I was like, okay, that's cool. And she just started going and rattling on. And I was like, that's cool. That's cool. <laughs> um, <laughs> she goes, I have such a crush on him. He's so, and I'm just like, that's cool. <laughs> Oh, come sit down with me. Come have something perfectly fine. We talked for quite a bit. We actually talked for hours. And then afterwards, I gave her some ideas in reference to her garden area and stuff like that. It, very nice female, that whole thing. And I don't mean nice in an Anna sort of way. I mean, like, I actually enjoyed having discussions with her. And so, but yeah, she went on and on about her. He is, do you know who Sean Hannity is? And I've heard of him. I've, I've listened to him on the, on the news before. And she's like, he is just so cute. And it's like, okay. <laughs> I think that you would really, really like him. And it's like, I, I do, I do, I do. <laughs> And then, you know, we started talking politics and stuff. And she's like, oh, Sean Hannity would love you. And I was like, okay. <laughs> she just kept going on about that. I was like, that's cool. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know. I don't remember her her name. It's not to be rude. It, it does have to do with my head injury after effects. But she, he is just so sweet. And he is just so handsome. And he is just so this. And he, and I'm just like, mm -hmm. I don't really know what he looks like. But sure. <laughs> like I, and she was, but you listen to him. How? How do you not know what he looks like? And so I explained some of the aspects in regards to my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. She's like, oh my God. And I was like, yeah, what about it? She's like, oh, I know that Sean Hannity. She just couldn't. <laughs> she just couldn't stop saying, and that Sean Hannity, and that Sean Hannity, you, you need to meet Sean Hannity because he just, he just would just love you. And I was just like, okay. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure he's probably a really cool guy. I'm sure. <laughs> no, no, no. I don't think you understand. He is just so sweet and he is so handsome. And I think, and I'm just, okay. <laughs> She's like, no, 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 I think he would like you. I think he would, I think he would like you a lot. And I was like, okay, <laughs> I don't know what that means. She's like, oh, well, you just, I think that, he, I think that, you know, I think, and I'm just, okay, you tell me, you tell me. <laughs> she, 
I think that if he were to ever meet you, he would just, ugh. And I'm like, oh, oh my God. okay. <laughs> it reminded me of when I was back in New Jersey. <laughs> different I know there are people who understand this especially East Coast however <laughs> and I know that there are others who very much do <laughs> but it was it was like what was it um there were a couple you need to meet some because let me tell you and he's this, and he's this, and this, and by the way, it was just, okay. I don't know. I don't, it would be funny if that was his mom or his grandma, I don't know, or an aunt of his, I don't know. Nonetheless, it was just, it was the cutest thing. It was so, it was just one of those, and you need to like, and it's like, do you know him? No, but I'm telling you, he is just so cute. And it's like, okay. I listen to him every night. I watch him every night. I do this. And, and I'm just, okay, cool. And like, do you know what a Republican is, young lady? Yes, ma'am. <clears throat> yes. Yes, I know what a Republican is. And she's like, do you have a problem with Republicans? And it's like, no, ma'am. <laughs> I'm, I'm actually a Republican. <gasps> oh, Sean Hannity would love you. <laughs> you need to do what ma'am <laughs> you just need to just you really need to meet Sean Hannity you really really need to meet Sean Hannity well um ma'am um I'm in what not now but back then I'm in Washington state and I think he is in New York and she was like you know, he might just wind up going to Washington State one of these days. You don't know, young lady. And it's like, yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> yes, ma'am. Okay. <laughs> oh, you're so meek and so modest. Oh, he will love that. And it's like... I don't know what that means. I don't get it. I did not laugh at that time. It was just one of those. Okay. I don't, I don't, I don't know. I'm just. Okay. You just, you just wait. One day you will meet him. Okay. Cool. I don't know when that'll be, but sure. No, I'm telling you, one of these days, you're going to and he's going to fall head over heels for you. Okay. No, you don't know. And it's like, oh, apparently not. Okay, you tell me. You tell me all about it. You just, you don't know. He's going to see you, and he's just going to be... And I'm like, oh, okay, I, I recognize that. I recognize that. <laughs> Go on. And she's like, just look at you. And I'm like, because <laughs> I'm, at that time, well, I'm wearing jeans. 
I'm obviously not now. And <laughs> I had, you know, my jacket on because it was Washington State. And, you know, um, I mean, I'm sure he's seen other females in jeans and, like, a jacket before. And she was like, no, you're just so modest. And it's like, oh, yeah, well, you know, I'm just... I'm just me. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> and it, it just it it was it was a very very different ex experience. It, I, I have never experienced some. You just wait. You are going to meet him, and when he meets you, and it's like okay. Um, Okay, go ahead. He is just gonna just completely just, oh, he's gonna, he's just gonna love you. And it's like, okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm sure that, like, maybe, um, <clears throat> He's, he's got, like, stuff that he's doing, <laughs> and, you know, and, and a part of, and he's probably, you know, really, really, really busy. Oh, honey, and it's like, uh-huh, <laughs> you don't know, he's just so cute. You know, I have, I, I, and then she, I have a, a little thing for him. And it's like, do you mean a crush? <laughs> and she goes, kind of. It's like, uh, okay. And then she's like, come here. You said you could help me with my garden. You come show me. I'm like, oh, okay. So this is what you do with this. And we just went on from there. And so... <laughs> different situation. I definitely, I, I've, I've had some different experiences. I don't deny that. That, I have to admit, was one of, like, <laughs> despite certain things. <laughs> I just, one of those okay you know I mean I'm sure he's you know a very nice male and I don't mean that in you know in my biological mother sort of way I just you know I'm sure he is a very <laughs> kind and you know I've, I've heard him I'm sure he could throw a tantrum though I have a feeling he can get really really mad like Really, 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 really mad. I have, I, I mean, not in like a bad, mad sort of way. I could just, I, I could see him having, I, I could see him getting angry. Though everybody can get angry. It's what they do with that anger that is, you know, what it is. And so, I just, I couldn't help but laugh because I was listening. Again, once again, to Sean Hannity and <laughs> the current president of the United States of America, Donald J. Trump, and it was it was, thinking back. If I'm not mistaken, shortly after, um, oh, I think it was maybe, maybe at most, like oh, whenever I posted the um, journal blog on uh, my website in the Ornery PSA area um, in regards to the trucks um, <clears throat> in reference of the GOP candidates. If I'm not mistaken, like one or two weeks later, 
I wound up here, I was listening to, you know, I think it was Bill O'Reilly first, and then it was, no, no, it was, it was Greta Van, Van Susteren first, and listening to her, and, and I was working on my Medal of Honor art project and stuff like that, and then, um, and then it was, uh, I think it was Bill O'Reilly then, and then afterwards was, um, Sean Hannity, and at that point, in whatever it was, like, you know, he did his open and stuff like that, and then, like, he kind of yelled, because, and he, he's just like, and so this is who, you know, and very much blatantly, and so I'm going to ask, like, you get him. <laughs> like, I was, in, I was in the middle of looking at the map on the wall of, in regards to the, the planning aspects of my Medal of Honor art project. And I just, it, poof, out the TV, turn over, turn around to look and kind of try to force myself to look at the screen. And, and Donald J. Trump, and I'm like, yes! I mean, internally, I, I did not do that. Out, you know, I, I may have, but, you know, internally, I know it was one of those, <laughs> so good, yes, <laughs> get Donald Trump, yeah, he got to, he got to, <laughs> I don't think I did that in, in, in the room that I was in, um, nonetheless, in my thoughts, I know definitely, it was, yeah, and it's a left, and it's another left, and it's a right, and a left, and a ah, 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 ah. And, <laughs> and then Junior went on, <laughs> I don't know how much longer after that, and he was, you know, ta I think he was talking with Eric and, and, and on Sean Hannity's show, and the two are the, the two of them, and this, and this, is like, yes, yes, and get, and get it, and get it, and go, 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 and this. And then, you know, because my thoughts are the way my thoughts go. And so, <laughs> and so, you know, I'm planning my Medal of Honor art project stuff. And, you know, looking at the map, working on the different aspects. And then I hear a few different things. And then it's a, and it's a, and it's a, and it's a goal. Yes, he is president of the United States of America. And I did, I stayed up to, I mean, I already had insomnia, so that really wasn't very difficult for me, realistically. Um, and I knew he was going to get it. I knew it. I knew he was going, I knew he was going to do it. I was like, get it. And then, oh. <laughs> You know, as they as they did the counting and stuff like that, and and the state goes to president or to then you know Donald Trump. It's like and and go 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 go. <laughs> that's that's that that's how. <laughs> in my thoughts, I can't be the only one. <laughs> election, you know, especially the results, I was like, and then, and then, oh, 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 and a dodge, and another dodge, and she did it. <laughs> I already, I went enlisted <laughs> to not have to <laughs> get involved with politics until, you know, getting to a certain rank. <laughs> I already of ironies and so <laughs> nonetheless I also have a feeling that uh yeah he's gonna get it again because like I mean I think at the same time in certain regards um and this is a personal opinion in that regard I think that when it was um President George W. Bush 
senior. And then there was that um, aspect of who was president when I had enlisted after fighting to emancipate to be able to enlist. I had a feeling that there was kind of a kind of an upset kind of jolt sort of thing. And not just because of my nightmare at the time and, and, and then later dream and stuff like that, but more along the lines of looking back in 2020 now to that time frame. I mean, I'm sure there are people who have studied all sorts of stuff far more in detail than I, who would be able to look back to that time frame and see certain um, aspects in regards to the difference between the eight year term of a, of a president of the United States of America and the vice president of the United States of America and see the um, shift in the country and, and, and throughout the world in regards to if switching someone out because of the, the voting aspects. And so while back when um, it was then, um, was it President Roosevelt, where he was in for, for what was it, three terms, he was the longest term president at that time, whatever year that was, um, it had been a, a major, major issue for uh, not just the White House, but in Congress and in Senate, and then throughout the military and um, law enforcement and just all across, not just the United States of America, but even the world, when he wound up passing away and dying uh, that whatever year that was. I know that was before my head injury on Palm Sunday in 2000. I just don't remember what year. And so, whereas back then, you know, the entire country of the United States of America and the world had um, not known what to do, not, not that they didn't know what to do, but it was just such a a jolt and kind of a we need to figure this out and this sort of stuff and so in reference to um, later on when it was President George W. Bush Sr. and then that aspect with the shift in regards to who was President of the United States of America when I fought to be emancipated so I can join the, the Army branch of, well, at that time it was between the Army and the Marine Corps branches, but nonetheless, the Army branches, which one I wound up going into, and then in my own internal thoughts, and I did discuss this um, because I did not go into the Marine Corps because I was looking at the specifics in regards to both the short-term and the long-term benefits, and I went into the Army I was not going to, um, I mean, obviously other higher ups would, you know, obviously have the right to say, you know, soldier in that regard. However, personally, I could not allow myself to call myself a soldier. So at that time, after signing the initial paperwork before going and so on and so forth, um, it was one of those, I'm a recruit. Until I graduate basic training, I'm a recruit. So when I graduate basic training, then I can say that I'm a soldier. Until then, I'm just a recruit. That's one example of those who have been in the Marine Corps, they understand what I'm talking about, or if you've researched the Marine Corps. And so, at my head injury, I paused someday in 2000 during basic training, so I didn't become a soldier. I'm technically a veteran. Even that, I still have a little bit of 
because of other stuff, nonetheless. Um, in reference to the aspects of um, the points of when then Pre President George W. Bush Sr. had um, been voted out of office and it had become uh, then President Bill or William J. Clinton or Jefferson Clinton, um, who was one of those I knew he was going to get it. I, 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 <laughs> I knew he was going to wind up becoming president at that time. Um, discussed that with some of the congregants when I was going to Old Tenet Presbyterian Church. There were a couple of guys um, in the library area of uh, Old Scots Hall that would always be reading the newspaper or one of the uh, political magazines and stuff like that, and, you know, oh, well, well, you know, since you have kind of like, um, kind of a really weird thing about you, um, I'm going to show you some pictures. <laughs> okay. What do you, what do you think of this? Well, what are you, what are you asking me about? Like, are you asking what, and they'd, they'd let me know in a very minimal way. Uh, oh, well, that one's going to be president at that that's who's going to be president. No, not that one. That one. N -n -n no, that's not going to. Yeah, no, you can't have that one as the as the vice president. No, that one's not. No, you can't have. No, mm -mm, no. Well, why not? I just have a feeling that that's just not going to be helpful. That's just not going to be. Yeah, no. And I just am the way I am. So when it came to um, joining, it, it didn't matter that it was a, a Democratic president that I had joined um, after fighting to be emancipated. In my opinion, that, that was not, that was not the, the point. The political aspect was not the reason why I fought so hard to get in. Um, same thing when it comes to, as far as my Medal of Honor art project, I started that when it was still President Barack Obama in office. I started that back in 2014. I didn't have the ability to post pictures on my website, um, www.susanmuling.com, until 2015 because those pieces were being encased in glass. I dropped them off to McClendon's in Tacoma you know, in 2014. However, I did not <laughs> get to take the pictures and put them up on my website um, from the full encasement until 2015. And so, though there might be some that would be like, oh, well, you know, you then wrote about um, president who is now a president, Donald J. Trump, back then. Well, I, I wrote about a lot of stuff. It wasn't just one or two things. It wasn't only in reference to the presidential election. I wrote about a lot of different things. It wasn't one or two topics. Yeah, at certain points I discussed in more specific um, the, the GOP election aspect. However, my Medal of Honor art project was not in regards of, because I began it before he even announced he was going to run. Obviously, 2014 is not 2000. Was it 2015 or 2016 when he announced? Either way, 2014 in August of 2014, to be specific, is when I got the first rubbing completed for my Medal of Honor art project. Now, ironically, the one of the two pieces that are in Washington State, that is the original rubbing that I had gotten one of the two. 
literally meaning one of the two pieces, and then also because of the way that particular um, rubbing artwork has been completed, because I completed the cross as well as um, the original one that I had found in Calvary and Tacoma of Washington State. Um, I wanted to make sure I could get both pieces. I didn't think about the math on that. I acknowledge that. Same thing with the other, the second piece. And I obviously did not think about the math. I just was like, oh, dude, I'm so excited. I love it. <laughs> that math, yeah, those numbers. Yeah, that, that has to do with most likely that college algebra with trigonometry and calculus to second grade math being an issue as well as that um i don't know if it's considered depth perception issues <laughs> or what uh however um obviously it was one of those oh it's gonna be great i'm gonna do this and color it and i'll paint it i'm gonna do this and be all this stuff and yeah i'm me and so yeah yeah, yeah, one of the rubbings is from back in 2014, and then the second rubbing is, I think, from 2017 or 2016, one or the other. Actually, it's probably 2017 that that one was, uh, the second portion of that was completed for that particular Medal of Honor recipient from Calvary area um, because of when I took it in to get encased in glass, whatever, whatever year I took it in to be encased in glass, it would be either that specific year or the year prior that I had um, gotten the second piece. So whichever has more aged of a look, that would be the older piece. And I thought that that was actually, it probably was 2017, because I wanted to get both pieces uh, for that particular um, Medal of Honor recipient, but <laughs> those who know Washington State weather, um, <laughs> the weather's going to do what the weather's going to do. And then, you know, um, brass, as far as like the metal, areas for Medal of Honor recipient markers, those particular pieces are easy to dry off, whereas stone is porous. So having to wait, if it had rained, depending on how long it had rained, depended on how long it would take for the stone to be dry enough for me to complete a rubbing of that particular, um, the cross portion. And so, you know, it took a while, but I, I still got it done. And, and I thought that when, um, the irony in that regard is when I had gotten Martinez, I think is the other Medal of Honor recipient, that one's uh, in Colorado, I had, it was the second, well, second time I specifically remember doing this. I've done it a few times. Um, first time I did this was in the Florida Keys during the dolphin excursion. The second time that specifically remembering the place as well as the time of doing this is when I was in Colorado and I went to go get Martinez's marker rubbing for the Medal of Honor stuff for my Medal of Honor art project. And, um, it was, you know, cloudy out and I was like, oh, uh-uh, no. <laughs> you are going to wait until I get the rubbing done. You, mm, 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 mm. And so I was doing everything that I could to get the rubbing of the marker as quickly as I could. And then my hands twitched and stuff like that. And then I finally got it. And then I get the, the piece of paper to the car. As soon as I start doing the hairspray to keep the stuff there, <laughs> psh, down four. And I was like, oh, that's, that's cool. You waited until I was done and that's in there. Cool, cool. 
Mm-hmm. And I finished doing the hairspray to make sure it was setting properly and then got in the car and drove off. And I was like, yeah, that's right. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Don't you start raining until I tell you to start raining. Or at least let you know it's okay to start raining. I'm in the middle of doing something. And <laughs> that was all in my head at that point. It was just one of those, mm-hmm, that's right. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get that taken care of, and then you're allowed to start raining. Mm-hmm. And so, <laughs> similarly to, so those storm clouds need to just stay out in the ocean. Calm down a little bit. <laughs> There's a few ships that need to be able to get to dock, including this one, but not the only one. So you just, you just, you just stay out in the ocean because I said so. And... <laughs> And then, yeah, as soon as the, the ship got to port that my son, my daughter, and my niece were on as the, the captain drove the ship, um, it was just one of those, mm-hmm, that's right, told you. And so, <laughs> in my head, I didn't say that out loud, um, but it, it, it was just, mm-hmm, don't make me. Punch and cloud. <laughs> Not the exact same way as far as the scuba diving aspect, but you best listen. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that is what it is. Nonetheless, if there were individuals who were like, oh, you know, she only did that for whatever. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Nope. Mm-mm. I, I started that in August of 2014. And if I, I know, I know that I went from college algebra with trigonometry and calculus to second grade math. However, 2014, <laughs> I know it's a lot of numbers. However, um, 2014, and, and then going forward is 2015, and then going forward is 2016. So that would mean <laughs> that 2014, when I began my Medal of Honor art project in August of 2014, um, and... <laughs> who is the current president of the United States of America now, did not announce his candidacy until 2015 or 2016. So that would mean at least one month before he announced his presidency, I have began my Medal of Honor project. I wrote about stuff after, um, in regards to the presidential election of that time frame. However, I started my Medal of Honor Art Project, I think that August of 2014 is before the date that the current president of the United States of America announced that he was going to run for presidency. And again, I still started my Medal of Honor Art Project when um, then President Barack Obama was in office, which is kind of ironic when you think about it, because if I'm not mistaken, um, so 2014 is obviously two years before 2016, so my biological parents moved my biological sister and I out from New Jersey 
to Crystal Lake, Illinois, a, a smaller town in Illinois, because they were tired of hearing me say that I was going to join the military for the United States of America. The irony in that regard, when you really think about it, because, you know, while at this point, of course, there are a lot of individuals who joined the United States of America's armed forces, various branches and divisions after 9-11. But before then, and even now, if you really think about, like, how many smaller towns <laughs> have a larger amount of former military guys? <laughs> If they thought that moving me, which is what they thought, because, you know, they were upset in regards to having to hear me complain about not getting into masks, so that way I could start my um, <laughs> military stuff officially, because it had a naval academy involved with marine and science technology school. You had to go through the military academy portion of that for the Navy. Um, they thought, which apparently, because that's what they thought, that is what they told me, it's just one of those, if they really, really thought about it, as I told them, they should have moved me closer to Chicago, because that would have been easier. Um, in, in certain regards to attempt to, I still was going to join. Uh, however, <laughs> I don't know how many guys I knew and not being sexist just you know in an overall sort of way of, of an east coast term I don't know how many guys parents or aunts and uncles that I wound up meeting who had military backgrounds and discussed that with me so it's kind of one of those well you know <laughs> That backfired a lot on them, um, by a lot. <laughs> and so, in that regard, in reference to my Medal of Honor art project starting two years before the 2016 election uh, for the presidency, And then the amount of people that I knew in the state of Texas, ironically, ironically in the state of Texas, the amount of people that I knew that just could not, and not just my biological sister, by the way, a lot of people I knew, how can you really be a Republican? Look at you. Ironically, at those points, I was usually wearing a skirt or a tutu. <laughs> With the exception of in regards to when speaking with my biological family and biological sister, nonetheless, yeah, yeah, I, I see what I look like. Look at your hair. Okay, well, you know, I got red hair. <laughs> <laughs> what about it? Well, you, with your tattoos and all that color in your skin, you're supposed supposed to be, I'm supposed to be what? I'm, I'm supposed to be what? Well, with that color in your skin, you should be, should, what? What did you just say to me? You should be a Democrat and what? What? <laughs> I, I just, just, East Coast attitude instantly would start coming out. <laughs> What you say? What you say? What you what you say? And and that did not matter where. <laughs> at all, at all whatsoever. Nope. So um, you know, if in certain regards, there were certain individuals hypothetically who had something to do with. That Cowboys dance hall thing, hypothetically, in regards to how I wound up in Washington State with my son, who was a minor at the time, after what was going on with my daughter, his sister, um, 
to, you know, try to be like, oh, well, go to, go to see this. <laughs> then you won't be so patriotic. And then my Medal of Honor art project. Oh. <laughs> then you won't be so supportive of the military. And then my Medal of Honor art project again. <laughs> and so then you won't be a Republican. And Donald J. Trump and Donald Trump. Yeah, he's going to go. And, <laughs> and I'm just going to listen to Fox News. <laughs> Not that they're all Republicans on there, nonetheless, you know. I won't listen to Fox Business. I'm going to listen to CNN and I won't listen to MSNBC, but I'm still a, I'm still a Republican. Like <laughs> I don't care what I look like. I don't care what color I got in my skin. I don't care what my hair looks like at all. I'm mean anything. There are plenty of people with all sorts of color in their skin that wound up voting for the current president of the United States of America, Donald J. Trump. And, you know, just saying. I got, I got every color of the rainbow in my skin. I got white. <laughs> I have red. I have orange, I have yellow, I have green, I have blue, I have purple, I have black, and I also have, I have brown. So, <laughs> mm-hmm, yeah, that's right, mm-hmm, and you got the rainbow, so I got every color. From my ankles up. And at some point, my hair will go gray, and then there's silver. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And, you know, sometimes, well, especially this particular tattoo, the one that's underneath here, the symbol, that that comes out as gold in, in, in the correct lighting. So, just saying. Mm -hmm. So I got every color. And varying shades in between. <laughs> that being said, and making my way back in regards to Vancouver and Crystal Creek and speaking with that um, particular particular female. Um, Mm -hmm. I listened to Sean Hannity. I listened to him. I didn't, I didn't, you know, listen as much in regards to the way that I did, especially in, in Lakewood. That's a whole other ball of wax. Nonetheless, I still listened to him. I still paid attention. And I listened to Bill O'Reilly back in 2000. I think it was actually back in 2000 or 2001 was when I first started listening to Bill O'Reilly uh, on, on Fox News. And I was still listening to um, CNN and MSNBC at that time. It wasn't until in Washington State that I started actually listening to uh, Fox Business. Like, that, like realistically. Otherwise, yeah, I was listening, what was it, um, Bill O'Reilly had, uh, Reverend Al Sharpton on. I was, there were, there were several episodes of his show that I had already listened to several times, um, in regards to the, the different weeks and stuff like that and days, um, because when the, the events of 9-11 first occurred, um, it was just the, the local aspects that I was, I would force myself to watch and obviously listen. And it was one of those, okay. And then when they started not showing as much stuff, it was like, I need to, um, 
I need to focus more and I need to have more understanding and I just, I can't get that. Not in any offense towards them. It's just one of those, okay, they're, they're doing other stuff, which is good. Not, not saying anything negative about that. Just one of those, okay. And so ironically about that time was when my, my son had gotten sick and I was uh, in Wilford Hall with my son during that time. And so it was just CNN or Fox. That was it. Just back and forth. No other channels, just CNN or Fox, one or the other. And just listened and, okay, well, that need that needs to come in, that needs to come in. Because it wasn't very long before um, the local news station started reporting more stuff than just what was going on in that regard to um, the events of 9-11. And so they do snippets here and there, but they still did the local news, of course, because it's you know, needing that. Um, but for what I needed to pay attention to personally, it was one of those, mm -mm. CNN, fuck, CNN, fuck, that's it. And just back and forth, and it worked out because that remote had the has the the back button or whatever, or remember channel or whatever it is, and it goes straight back. And that's what I did. And um, so I don't know if Sean Hannity was on at that time, and in two thousand one specifically. However, I do remember um, Bill O'Reilly had uh, Reverend Al Sharpton on, and they were talking about um, a game that had come out. And um, Reverend Al Sharpton was discussing certain points that he agreed with in reference to the, the game, it was called Ghettoopoly, if I'm not mistaken. And so I was like, well, if he's not that, I mean, he doesn't seem that against it. And even same thing with like, Bill O'Reilly actually seemed in certain regards a little bit more offended than Reverend Al Sharpton. I was like, well, let me go, let me go check it out, make, uh, make my own opinion. And so ordered it and uh, it showed up and my now dead ex I said, no. I was like, oh, well, play the game. And I was like, I don't really want to. I just wanted to look at it. And so got it out, started playing. And if you actually <laughs> get that, um, you're supposed to cheat. Like in the, in the game instructions, it actually condoned that. Uh, and I didn't want to. I didn't want to cheat. And so I still won. <laughs> I won. I won without cheating at Ghettoopoly. Similarly to how I won when playing Monopoly. Um, <laughs> nonetheless. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I did. <laughs> And then I got in trouble for winning. And it was one of those. And he, my now dead ex-husband, he even yelled at me. He said, cheated and everything. And, blah, blah, blah. and I looked at him. I go, why would you cheat? And he said, because it was part of the instructions. Really? Where? Because, like, I thought it was just, like, Monopoly. You're supposed to, like, do it honestly and all that stuff. He's like, it's called Ghetto Monopoly. Yeah, but you know what? If you actually walked around in certain areas... You'd actually know. You better not. <laughs> it is not a good thing. It don't matter where you are. Um, it, it, like certain locations, it, 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 mm -mm, you still don't cheat. That was a mistake on your part. And then I dealt with that. <laughs> Nonetheless. Yeah, I've been listening to Fox News and stuff like that for years years mm-hmm mm -hmm. I did I still do every now and then you know for example Sean Hannity. Yeah, so 
but that female was just so cute because she would trust me. Oh, he didn't trust me. He just loved you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> sure. <laughs> No, 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 okay? No, 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 no. You don't understand. He will just head over heels over you. He would just. Okay, sure. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if I could. <laughs> sure. <laughs> anyway. You guys have a good one. <laughs> like, share, and subscribe to my official channel. You guys have a good one.